I showed you how to make a stack of dollar bills in the last tutorial, I think, so I think it makes sense that we move on to kind of a similar topic, which is poker chips, I guess. Uh, last result was kind of procedural. This one is pretty much entirely procedural, so uh, let me show you how to do the modeling, the materials, the blah, 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 and, you know, set dressing. Uh, let's start with a new project. So uh, this is what you're going to see in Blender. I'm using 2.92. You might be using a different version. And of course, the question is, how do we make a fucking poker chip, right? <laughs> uh, you don't want to start with a cube. Uh, what you want to do is you want to start with a cylinder because a poker chip is closest to that primitive. You always want to choose the primitive that's closest to the thing you're making. Duh. Okay. Um, so I'm, ha I'm adding more vertices. So it's a bit rounder, right? There's a bit more uh, faces going around. Okay. Uh, cool. Take this edit mode. We're going to scale it down. And ideally, you always want to work from reference here. But in my head, you know, a poker chip is roughly uh, this thick, although we can always change it on the fly later. Uh, point is, have reference. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> but but I, I'm assuming this is within like plus or minus 30% correct. Okay. Um, and all objects, even poker chips, which I think actually have very intentional bevels. Uh, point is, all objects have bevels. Okay. So we're going to add a bit of a bevel right here. Uh, nothing too insane. And then just to make sure everything's uh, shaded smooth, right click shade smooth. And if you have a bit of weird shading, which I don't think we do, but in case you do uh, go to your object data, go to normals and enable auto smooth. Okay. Um, it might make a tiny bit of difference um, at your bevel. Um, so, you know, at your discretion, I'm going to like bump it up a bit. So we uh, keep it smooth. Okay. Um, is there any modeling left to do? Well, it kind of depends on the kind of poker chip you're making, because it turns out there's a whole bunch of different types of poker chips, not just in terms of the texture, like what's painted on it, but also the shape of it. I'm going to go for one that has like a bit of a divot um, inside of it. And, you know, whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom. There's an argument uh, to be made for enabling symmetry, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to do it manually. Okay. So I to inset and then I to inset set again and what we're interested in again is this uh, ring so i'm going to actually i'm going to undo that and inset it just a bit more something like that um, and again i did this on top and bottom select that ring select that ring and if you want to inset it inwards you know your instinct is to hit e um, even though it extrudes uh, both sides and it extrudes both of them in the same direction right uh, take this go to what is it extrude along normals is that what it is or extrude individual, probably along normals, uh, because then each face is going to be extruded <laughs> in the face of the, in the direction of the normal, which is opposite for the top and bottom. So we just use this little handle, bring it down just a little, and then you can see top and bottom have the, uh, they're both going inwards, not just both going in the same direction. Okay, cool. Um, only other modeling, I guess, select those edges. Again, uh, this is the kind of thing that adds realism. Bevels are important, but of course, you could do this uh, procedurally with materials uh, because I actually showed how to do that. Um, but I'm just going to go pretty light uh, right here. Okay. So there is going to be our basic poker chip. Again, feel free to play with the auto smoothing, whatever. Uh, this is the model. The rest of it, uh, the, the part that's actually interesting is going to be in materials and shading. And let's just do it. Shading, okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're on the poker chip. How do we uh, make the material for it? Well, again, depends on what you're trying to do. But I've found that most poker chips, like pretty much all of them, um, have these stripes that are going around, maybe like six stripes on the uh, tips of it. And also on the inserted part, sometimes they have like a dashed uh, circle. Again, you can play with the proportions of this. Generally, uh, though, whatever kind of cylinder uh, mess you are making, uh, the trick that I'm going to show you is you want to use object coordinates because, again, uh, this is a coordinate system that moves with it, right? It's respective to the origin, but, you know, if you do this, it's going to generate some re weird results. So make sure you're doing everything in object mode, not edit mode, works with rotation, whatever. Uh, we take this, we separate it by X, Y, Z, once I can type it in. And the reason we're going to do this is what we want is a radial gradient. Um, of course, you could do this with like a quick uh, gradient texture, um, which might actually be, be the way to go. You could use like a radial um, object. You know what? Maybe I changed my mind. This is what I'm going to do. I'll show you how to do this uh, manually as well, though. Um, point is, if you separate X, Y, Z, there's some math you can do to get this uh, radial uh, gradient that's going to be useful for generating the stripes. The way you um, make this uh, thing out of like math nodes, just so you know, for your information, math, set this to arctan2. Uh, that's inverse tangent, where you take y divided by x. Don't worry about why it's the case. There's some math behind it. Uh, but point is, what it does is it looks at your x and y coordinates. Cartesian does a bit of math with inverse tangent to extract angle information, right? Not just Cartesian rectangular coordinates, uh, but polar coordinates. And then uh, we have this gradient that goes from 0 all the way to pi. So this is going past 1. It's going to pi. And then in this direction, 0 to minus pi. Um, so then, you know, all you do, map range, you go from instead of 0 to 1, 
minus pi to pi. And that should generate something very similar, if not identical. Um, so I guess we're improvising. I guess we're using gradient texture, okay? Uh, to generate the stripes, what I'm going to do, and since we want a very particular uh, number of stripes, I'm going to multiply it by that number, let's say six, okay? So instead of having a zero to one radial gradient, right? So the angle is going from zero to one. Now it's going from zero to multiply by six, right? Zero to six. Uh, we take this. I'm going to take it and then I'm going to, I can never find fraction. There it is. Um, the reason I'm doing this, by the way, is I want to take the original zero to one gradient and break it up into six identical gradients that take up a sixth of the rotation. So now um, each of these, um, e e what I'm trying to say <laughs> is the full gradient zero to six has now been broken up into six zero to one gradients. The reason this works is fraction uh, removes the integer, right? So 2.34 goes to 0.34. So everything's mapped uh, to a zero to one interval. Okay, don't worry about it too much. You take this, you uh, add in a compare, and we are going to be comparing to 0.5. In other words, the uh, gradients, we're going to be comparing to halfway in between 0.5, halfway between in between zero and one, and then add in a bit of a threshold. Okay. And you can see this generates those patterns. And also this is going to let you kind of slide it around in a weird way where there's a bit of a cutoff at those uh, edges of the gradient, but whatever. Okay point is we have this slider. That's what's important. Okay. Uh, so this is what we want, although we only want it on the very tips of the uh, kind of cylinder. So we want these stripes, but only at the tips. So not only do we want angle information, but also radius, how far away it is from the center information, right? Uh, to do this, what we can do kind of a rough approximation, I guess you want like only x, y, uh, kind of uh, radius information, but whatever, what we're going to do is we're going to take the same coordinate system, again, it's going to be object coordinates, uh, take this, set it to length. This is going to output a, um, in, in this sense, a three-dimensional, uh, every point on the uh, surface has a X, Y, Z coordinate, and those are transformed into length values, how big, how strong, how whatever is that vector. Um, technically and ideally, what you want to do is before you do this, you want to multiply by 110. So the uh, Z coordinate suppressed, you can see there is a bit of a difference without versus with, I'm going to keep it a uh, with, right? So this makes it so that we only care about how uh, far away we're going radially from the center. Again, this is something you can do with gradient texture, if you set it to uh, probably spherical or something. Uh, but whatever, we're doing it like this. Uh, what else? What else? We need a bit of a cutoff. So I'm going to use another math node, set this to greater than say, uh, where is this um, radial? Uh, gradient bigger than let's say I don't know 0.5 or whatever it may be uh, this kind of gives us this kind of slider right uh, if we take these two ideas this one and this one and multiply them together what do you think is going to happen well again multiplication means you incorporate both ideas so now we have uh, this gradient that it was divided into six sections that we said keep it but only in the areas where this is white okay um, so now we have this and we can view it through like the eyes of a principled BSDF and really, I know it's a bit confusing with all the math stuff. I mean, gradient texture saves us a bit of um, headache. And that's actually, before I go on that spiel, let's make that a bit bigger. Um, I, I understand that it's a bit confusing, but really this is the core trick of making a uh, poker chip procedurally, right? It's just a bunch of radial textures and radius information, right? Um, polar coordinates, long story short. Okay, uh, we want to take this and then kind of repeat the same idea a little, a little bit differently, but repeat it again to make that dotted line in the middle, uh, like I've seen in the uh, poker chips. Um, so we already have a gradient texture. Uh, so what we can do with it, I guess there's a couple ways we could approach it. I guess we could use a similar setup. So this time, we're going to copy these three nodes, just copy them over, connect the gradient texture, and now it gives us the same um, mask that we generated before. Although this time what I want is instead of like six sections, I want a dotted line with let's say 12 or 18 sections, right? You take that, we're also going to make another version with a uh, compare node, we're going to use a another kind of cutoff mask. So before we had this like radial uh, one, but this time we want the donut, right? And I'll show you why that is. Take this connect it here. Boom. Um, in other words, what this does that's different from uh, greater than is instead of having a cutoff from one end, uh, well, now we're comparing it to some central value. So this is kind of like the center point of the torus. And then we have a, a thickness. And this is a perfect way to generate the region we want. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to make it slightly bigger. Again, the idea is to isolate this on that area that we extruded downwards, right? That's the idea. And wh whenever we actually get it, we're just going to multiply these two ideas together, which again, um, it's going to give us this dotted line roughly. Okay, uh, to actually see what we're doing, because we need to see the geometry. And it's kind of hard to tell what's going on when it's just like pure black and white. 
Uh, take these two ideas, we're gonna add them together. So both of our like stripe versions, this one and the uh, bigger ones, uh, we're gonna send that through the base color. Now we can visualize it with actual shadows and stuff like that. Um, this is a good way to actually um, correct the position of this. So we have the center point of our dotted line and the thickness of it, just like that. And uh, if we go back to some of the gradient information, we can also mess with uh, you know, the number of dotted lines, etc. So all this is procedural, maybe 18. No, that's too many, maybe 14. And, and I'm sure there is an actual number of what it's supposed to be. All you gamblers out there are like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just making a torus with the lines on it. I don't know, it looks like poker chip, okay? Um, now we have the basic design and now the name of the game. How do we make this look realistic, right? We've done all the complicated procedural work. By the way, I should probably save it. I'm gonna call it a Patreon poker chip Y. Uh, because I'm going to make this file that file available to, to patrons once we're uh, done here. So check it out, check out the Patreon, but you don't need to. You have the tutorial if uh, you don't want that, right? Um, we've done all this work. How do we make it look good? Point, point being. Uh, first thing we can do is we can pick a color. So let's do mix RGB. Again, we've generated what looks like a, you know, a texture, but you want to think of it as a mask. Just white is one, black is zero, and we can use it to determine the factor of something like a mix RGB. Uh, where we could say let the bottom color be red or some poker chippy color and let the other stuff be like whitish something like that okay and uh, to give this a bit more realism you always want to switch to cycles um, that's just kind of a general thing Evie ain't doing it <laughs> most of the time get rid of the light and unless you want to do like really realistic lighting or something like that right um, unless you want to do that, always fastest to load in an HDRI. I get mine from HDRI Haven. Uh, they're free. I don't care where you get them. Just load one in. And this is going to give you um, environmental lighting. So it looks like it's in the scene, but generally there's going to be more detail here, lighting information, uh, than, you, than you could ever like make yourself, right? Uh, so film, transparent, uh, transparent glass, not necessary, but you could <laughs> if you're feeling crazy. <laughs> uh, you can see this is giving general um, lighting stuff that makes it look good, okay? Uh, you can mess with more stuff. Of course, we wouldn't want to make it metallic or anything, but some stuff you could consider playing with is uh, the roughness. You could have a bit of variation with like a noise texture or something like that. So this can be dirt. Again, uh, you're getting the stretching because you're not using a normal coordinate system, like, I don't know, object coordinates. I was using generated, so there was a lot of stretching because the bounding box was stretched. Um, point being, we can use this to generate some dirt, connect this to the uh, roughness, and then we should be able to see uh, there's tiny bits of variation of where it's shiny and where it's not shiny. You can make it more intense with a uh, color amp, but uh, this is a good way to add a bit, in a bit of a variation. And again, if you want to make it super intense, just so you know what I'm talking about, you add in a color ramp, and then let, let me actually visualize those regions. We make uh, pretty harsh cutoffs, and then you can see wherever it's black, uh, we have super shiny surfaces, and then otherwise uh, not so much, right? And then since poker chips aren't that shiny, at least the ones I've seen in person, you take the bottom handle, uh, bring it up a bit. So the base roughness is going to be something like, I don't know, uh, whatever you want to make it, 0.3, and then uh, where it's super rough in those uh, dirty <laughs> uh, areas, uh, you make it something closer to that, but a bit higher, just so there's a bit of variation, okay? Cool. Uh, you could do you could do a bunch of other stuff. There's not much else that makes sense. Uh, what is really going to sell this is that um, even though the poker chip doesn't look 100% realistic, is that because of the material or the shape? A bit. Uh, but really, what's making this not look real is that you never see a giant single poker chip hovering in the air. Right? It's always in a stack. Uh, there's shadows cast stuff like that. So let me show you how to do that. Super simple. Same thing as the dollar bill tutorial. Actually, uh, you take it, you add in an array. Um, and then you want to make sure it's set to one, but vertically like this, so the uh, chips are being stacked. So you can see now we're uh, going up the stack. Again, what I did is I'm saying I want this many copies, right, from the array, um, but I want them to exist. Um, you know, I want them to be spawned as we go up the z-axis, not anything weird like that, uh, which seems to generate some weird uh, texture stuff. I'm assuming that's because of the object coordinates, uh, which would make sense. So let's say we have a stack of, let's say, I don't know, 13 seems lucky or unlucky. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to have 13 anyways. You take this, you apply it. Um, okay, so now we have a stack of 13, and one thing that's important to realize, this is a single object, right? We applied an array modifier. It looks like 13 chips, and in edit mode, we can hit, like, you know, we can hit L to select link and move them individually, uh, but really, this is one object, okay? So take everything. We're going to run the separate by loose parts command. Um, so it's going to look at our uh, mesh. Say, say, it's going to look 
Let me try this again. It's going to look at our mesh. It's going to see what parts are dissociated or not attached to each other. In other words, loose parts, which is going to be each chip individually. And for each of those uh, regions or islands or whatever you want to call them, it's going to make it an object. So let's do by loose parts. Okay. Um, so now uh, the stack is has become uh, 13 cylinders. Okay. Uh, the reason this is very useful to have separate objects is not only can, can you move them around without any texture stretching or whatever, um, but also a nice thing you can do is you can use the randomize transform command, which is something I'm a big fan of, okay? So you apply randomize transform to all the objects that are selected, and then let's say that we want, first of all, you're never going to line them up perfectly, right? So we want rotation on the z-axis, randomize meaning uh, each one's going to have a different value, right? And you can choose kind of the magnitude or the maximum variation possible. I'm just going to choose a big number like 60. That will make it look very random, okay? Another thing is unless you very kind of carefully stack it up, uh, it's not going to be a perfect cylinder. There's going to be some jutting out on the x-axis. And this is where it starts looking much more real. I'm going to uh, stay in look dev mode for now once it loads, uh, just so we don't need to calculate. So some of them are on the x-axis display, some of them on the y-axis. And you can, again, you can choose the amount of variation. Uh, you don't want to touch scale since the chips are all the same, but... um. Point being, this is what is going to add a bunch of realism. If you want to get crazy, you could do a tiny bit of variation on the X and Y, but then the stack wouldn't necessarily make sense. Uh, point being, wow, I just undid everything. Uh, point being, uh, randomized transform is a MVP. Okay, so now we have a stack. Let's see it in cycles. Yeah, that's looking really good. If anything, the only thing that's making this not look good is maybe the geometry could be a bit better. You could inset it more. But again, patrons are getting the original version I showed in the render at the beginning, right? Um, another thing we could do, let's just duplicate one of these chips, rotate it over. By the way, uh, if your rotation isn't like at the origin, even though you have it set to either median point or individual origins or something, make sure you take all of these and set it to set origin to geometry. Uh, the reason the origin wasn't in the right place is originally this was a single object because of the array modifier, right? Uh, so they all shared an origin even after we separated them. Um, so I'm just going to place this manually. You could do it with physics or something like that. Um, but I'm kind of too lazy for that. Oh, I'm seeing a nice little jut out over here. So I'm just going to put it right there. And, uh, you know, that's a somewhat of a completed scene. You can mess around with the color or the number of stripes again, all procedural. Uh, so you can make it green chips or whatever. And, uh, yeah, that's how you make poker chips. <laughs> I, I hope you learned something. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you did. You learned about polar coordinates and all that. And, uh, I don't know. I feel like I, I don't know how to end this one in a very climactic way, so I guess we'll just end it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you want the original blend file, not necessarily this one, but I think the one I made uh, for the render, right, which I'm going to spice up, clean up all the nodes and everything. It's available on Patreon. Patreon. Patrons are the people who go to Patreon. Whatever. Um, I want to thank all 500 to 600. I'm not sure how many. Uh, some active patrons that are getting bun files. They are getting exclusive tutorials that I do not post to either channel. Um, at a certain tier. Discord access. Behind the scenes access. Like, you know, what is going on with the uh, newest uh, CG tutorial. Somebody knocking at the door. Hey, can you come back in a minute? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I guess that's it. Bye. <laughs>